I've always been into Warhammer and its systems and games and miniature ranges and as you've probably noticed after god knows how many years of being in the miniature painting hobby, I still am. I genuinely really look forward to seeing all the things that Games Workshop puts out and even on my channel and in my spare time, I think it's like 96% of everything I paint is still a Games Workshop miniature, so I clearly like it. <laughs> but in the last couple of months or so, I've had way more time to myself to kind of explore the world of miniatures outside of Games Workshop and oh my god has it been fun. Like I said, I think I'm always gonna find Warhammer and its lore and the miniatures super cool, but recently I've discovered that if Space Marines and Tyranids aren't quite your jam, there is definitely something out there to meet your freaky little tastes and you should definitely put some effort in to try and find it. From epic and horrifying Dark Souls-esque monster ranges to cool cartoony looking fantasy miniatures and literally everything else you can think of in between. Which brings me onto the subject of today's video, a love story of sorts between me and perhaps not unexpectedly, a range of miniatures which are as far from the grimdark denizens of the 41st millennium as I think it's possible to be, the Cloth Goblins of Habenagerie. Habenagerie, ha I said that right, great, whoosh. <laughs> So let me start off by introducing you to the object of my unwavering affection, the Cloth Goblins. The Cloth Goblins are a range of miniatures from a small sculptor and miniature manufacturer in Scotland called Statuesque Miniatures. And they are small, incredibly simple and smooth, cute as the day is long, and a little bit grumpy looking. And at their core, they're just a bunch of dubious little guys, just like me. And since becoming my own small hobby content creator and accidental producer of miniatures myself, I've really discovered the importance of just kind of going for it and supporting things which you genuinely like. It honestly means the world to me when you guys subscribe to my YouTube or my Twitch or join my Patreon or just buy a bit of merch. And I think I understand this community and the gratitude I have for it way more than when I worked for Big Plastic. So when I saw these little guys being advertised as a Kickstarter, I backed them so fast I gave myself massive goblin related whiplash injuries. And I feel like a bit of a douche for saying this, but it was the first Kickstarter I had ever backed in my life. So I was very, very excited to receive my goblins. And then in the way that I think is quite common for Kickstarters, or so I hear, I forgot about them until a couple of months later when I received my box of goblins. And when they did arrive, I just absolutely fell in love with them. I got this little box. This little box here. You know that name. Do you guys know what's in the box? Because what's in the box made me cry three times in one day. Which isn't, it's not a lot for me. But I did anyway. Look at him, he's a little girl. I wept. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. And it's really hard to explain why I find the miniatures themselves so satisfying, but they definitely itch some kind of weird little goblin charm magpie sort of part of my brain. I think a lot of it has to do with like the hand feel of them. And I know that's a freaky word and I don't like it either, but we're gonna go with hand feel because they're just very smooth and the metal makes them feel really heavy and they make like this very satisfying little tinkly noise when you play with them. And maybe I'll attach some like Cloth Goblin ASMR here. smooth. But the point is, they were really satisfying and they look so nice that I kind of didn't really want to paint them. Until I painted one live on Twitch. Oh, he's so cute! Oh my god, I love him. And I got absolutely addicted and then I couldn't stop. I've always been a big advocate for a thing that I like to call a cheer up box of miniatures. And I'm fairly sure I'm not the only person who does this in the world. But I have this little box of miniatures, which just just make me kind of happy and don't take very long to paint. And whenever I'm sad or I need a break from a big
bigger project. I pull one out and I paint it up. Getting bogged down by armies and larger projects is a real thing and there's absolutely no shame in it. But sometimes you just want to rest your brain from edge highlighting your 200th, 201th? 201st. <laughs> but sometimes you just want to rest your brain from edge highlighting your 200th space marine and just kind of get that nice little buzz you get when you complete a project. And these simple little cloth goblins were totally perfect for that. For a few days I switched my brain off and I painted up simple green skin, easy peasy wooden weapons and had a great time experimenting with different sorts of pretty patterns. And when I was done the little warband was just so satisfying satisfying and delightful, and as someone who very rarely paints squads of anything, I really felt like I had achieved something too. I could honestly spend this whole video telling you how I painted up these goblins, and fortunately if you are interested in my painting process on these little guys, I managed to turn my two week long hyperfixation into a pretty comprehensive tutorial on skin, weapons, and freehanding patterns, and if you like you can check that out now by subscribing to my Patreon. But like that should be the end of the video right? I discovered a range of miniatures that I loved and I painted them up to completion and I can go to bed and get old and die happy and my children and my grandchildren will know that I did the impossible and I actually bought miniatures and painted them right away. Like that's pretty good right? Well not quite. After I'd finished painting them I just wasn't quite satisfied and I had this weird itch and this urge to keep going and for me as someone who loves finishing a miniature and just moving on to the next project was a really weird feeling. I was already shocked that I had painted more than one of them. Like who, who had I become? Who is this person? I wanted, no I needed to build terrain? <laughs> Now I want to make it very clear at this point that I'm not a terrainy kind of girl. If you see me painting a tank or a plane, that's already sort of pushing it. I really like painting individual miniatures and just little guys, and terrain is not exactly my jam. And although this urge is an anomaly, it has happened before, with my Blood Bowl goblins and my snake bite orcs. And I think what it is is when I really pour my heart and my soul into each individual little miniature and I love them so much I feel really compelled to kind of just give them somewhere to live. And I talked to Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshop about this urge because he makes loads of terrain and he hit me up with like the best quote ever which really sums up how I feel about this whole project. Which is, building your minis a home is the truest expression of love for them. And that really resonated with me, so I set about creating a tiny world for my new favourite miniatures. I wanted to make the little diorama world thingy reflect the style and the vibe of the miniatures themselves, so I started to plan a little diorama which fit within the box that they were sent to me in. To me this seemed like a really cool and easy starting point because I knew the box was the perfect shape and size and all the little miniatures definitely fit inside it. And I really like the vibe of the cardboard box too which sounds a little bit strange but let me explain. When I propped up the box and made the little ground level inside of it, it looked like a tiny stage and after I'd envisioned all the cloth goblins putting on a little show inside of their tiny little theatre box, it only seemed logical and fitting to then make the rest of the scenery and terrain inside the box also look like little stage props too. And I think that the very simple cut out cardboard stage prop sort of vibe really fits the theming of the cloth goblins quite well because anything over detailed or too complicated wouldn't really go with the very simple and cute nature of the goblins themselves. So after I'd settled on the size and shape of my diorama I did a little sketch on my tablet to plan out what I wanted to populate the diorama with and sort of roughly work out what colours I wanted to paint it to. And I definitely recommend, if you can, doing a little sketch before you just crack on with bigger projects like this or Armies on Parade or even bigger dioramas. I always do it and I literally never regret it after. I decided that I wanted to make a little medieval fort scene to match the cloth goblins noble knightly nature and to have them in a little forest at night and to have a little castle on the hill for them to defend as well. And after I was done with that it was time to make the real thing. Now once again 
again, I want to make it very, very clear that what you're about to see here is gonna look a whole lot like a kid's craft table and not the awesome terrain building videos that you're probably used to seeing here from other incredibly talented hobby YouTubers. I'm mostly using glue and craft knives and little bits of easily cuttable plywood and cardboard and just a whole lot of trust the process here. And honestly, I think that that's okay because just like these little goblins themselves, I think this whole process has been very me. After a while of sanding down and gluing and trying my best to stay tidy, all of the pieces I wanted were done and they felt sturdy and well put together and I think they actually looked really cute so I was quite proud of myself. And just like the goblins themselves, I kind of didn't want to paint it when it was assembled because it just looked really rustic and cute as it was and it was giving me serious like Kirby's epic yarn, Paper Mario vibes and I just really loved it as it was. But I'd already painted all the goblins and I mocked up all the colours so I had to crack on. You can probably tell by the extremely messy desk and the concentration in which I'm painting up these little trees and castles and ladders and flags that I'm just also having the best time ever with this project Project, and at the end of the day, I think that's what really matters. When I'd finished painting up the basic scene, I thought it looked a little bit flat and I realised that what I really wanted to do was give the whole piece the same love and attention that I'd given each of my cloth goblins by just adding in a metric poop ton of weird clashing patterns everywhere again. And I think it worked out really nicely and it just kind of tied in the two paint jobs of the miniatures and the terrain together really effectively. And also also, I realised after I painted it that the grass looks a little bit like Animal Crossing grass and Tiny Louise is more than okay with that, so yay. So with all that love and enjoyment and crafting out the way, I'd like to take you on a little journey to Habenagerie and the mysterious forest wherein lived the cloth goblins. <laughs> In the end, I decided not to glue down any of the little individual components of the scene because, as you can see, it kept the ability for me to kind of play around with the miniatures. The castle and the trees and the campfire, which is probably my favourite bit, can all be placed wherever to make loads of different kinds of stories and adventures for the cloth goblins. And I think that's one of the reasons why this project in particular really struck a chord and really just stuck with me. Because at the end, when I was finished and I I was setting up all my shots and having fun, I really just felt like I was playing with my miniatures. And I don't mean playing as in like playing a game or a tabletop RPG or role playing game or anything like that. In fact, these miniatures, they don't even have rules at all. They're just sweet and simple and fun to paint. And when they're done, they're all protecting their castle or lurking in the woods or gathered around a campfire to discuss stories or their next mission. And I think that despite the cloth goblins being the simplest miniatures I have ever painted, they inspired me to be more imaginative and more creative and to have more fun actually playing with my miniatures than I have been in ages. And I ended up with a project that I am extraordinarily happy with. And to be honest, that's pretty cool. So thank you cloth goblins and as usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, thanks for being rogues. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>